Today on the Travel Magazine, we will take you to Montreux, Switzerland and on a tour of the Swiss Alps. But first, to Toronto, Canada. Toronto has everything for everyone. You have the Dome Stadium, which is so far, I think, the only one in the world, the sports stadium. The CN Tower, the tallest tower in the world, 1,815 feet. You have the hotels in Ontario Place and the Toronto Islands and our Chinatown, the Kensington Market. You know, it's just wonderful. I think after the Second World War, so many different nationalities came pouring into Toronto. And it's this mix of culture, I think, that makes Toronto and has made Toronto grow and be as interesting. It's the mosaic of all the different cultures. Peter Ustinov summed it up best by saying, Toronto is New York run by the Swiss. Hi, I'm Jake DeBoer and welcome to this edition of the Travel Magazine. Toronto is Canada's largest and most culturally diverse city. It is the financial and transportation hub of the country, as well as a vibrant cosmopolitan city, which truly makes it one of the world's greatest. Here in Toronto, there's a famous man for One of Toronto's most colorful insane. personalities is Ed Mervish, whose honest Ed store is a head. Toronto landmark. When I was first married about 53 years ago, I cashed my wife's insurance policy, $214. We rented a store in this location. In fact, there's a sign in the corner window, and that sign in the corner window says the original store was smaller than this window. And that's where we started, and uh, it, it all grew out of that. He sells pins and needles, shoes and packs, shirts and ties and household waxes. H-O-N-E-S-T-E-D. -E -E -E. Honest Ed. Crazy Honest Ed. We have a uh, harbor front which is an attraction and what a beautiful setting and so many things uh, to offer to visitors there both for buying and for strolling and for observing and for sightseeing and the boating. This is Ontario Place, a man-made family park built on the shore of Lake Ontario. Ontario Place is a playground and they have entertainment for children and for adults and they have great attractions. Stars are brought in in the evening and entertainment is there. So it's a very attractive uh, entertainment area. From the IMAX theater in the Cinesphere to the large concert performances, it is truly a day's outing for the whole family. One of Toronto's oldest traditions is the St. Lawrence Market, where you literally taste the city's colorful ethnic blend. St. Lawrence Market is a farmer's market. The farmers come there at four or five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday morning. They bring their produce and uh, they have the following of people who just enjoy that and getting everything fresh. When I was a kid, I used to deal with some of the farmers for our store on Dundas Street. And you know, you go down there at six, seven o'clock in the morning, it's really a great pleasure. Fort York was at one time the battleground between American and British colonial troops. Renamed Toronto, the fort now stands as an open air museum. What we're gonna do for the next 15 minutes or so is just show you some of the drill a British soldier would have done every day for three or four hours. Attention! 
shoulder. I'm... And then as he progressed down the back of the line, each soldier drops his ramrod. Slide, shoulder, arm. Slide, it, load. Handle, got it. Make, ready. Well, I'm up to Mr. Ted. Zed, fire. Toronto is a sports town, no doubt about it. From its professional football to the world champion Toronto Blue Jays baseball team, Toronto has made the rest of the world stand up and take notice. We are a great sports city, but we've always supported all the sports. The attendance at the Sky Dome is the highest in the world, and you never miss a game. If it's raining, the roof goes up. If not, you enjoy the sunshine. But the Sky Dome is the only sports stadium in the world that has a hotel attached to the side of it. You can rent a room, lie in bed, and watch the ball game. But to true sports fans, there is no place in Toronto more sacred than this. Toronto is home to the one and only Hockey Hall of Fame. It's a shrine to the game that typifies Canadian tradition. This facility is a place that uh, really traces the history of the game of hockey, pays tributes to the greats of the game of hockey, uh, houses certainly the largest collection of hockey artifacts in the world. But at the same time, we've really put it into a modern setting which is why you, you perhaps will see a, an old pair of ice skates from the late 1800s, but right beside that will be a computer terminal that you can find out information on. The other big part of sort of the, the modern end of the Hall of Fame is the interactive technology, where not only are there a lot of things for you to, to see here, we give you a lot of things to do. So you can actually, for instance, go into a, a broadcast booth and do your own play-by-play -play of some of the all-time famous goals. We also have our own little mini ice rink, which is made out of plastic ice, which is actually skatable on real skates, and from time to time we will hold clinics there um, with some hockey greats to really be showing the audience uh, some of the skills involved with the game. But that's where you get your chance, again, to see how your hockey skills are. We give you a hockey stick and a puck, and you can either shoot at a target or another game out there where you become the goaltender. And again, through the wonders of modern technology, we put you in net and you have computerized pucks being fired at you so you can test your skills as a goaltender. This is not as easy as you think it is. <laughs> For this city of over three million people, Toronto has a vibrant and exciting nightlife. Toronto is the third largest theatre centre in the English-speaking world, after New York and London. Torontonians and visitors alike flock to see concerts, musicals and plays in some of the world's best stagings and some of the world's best theatres. Something to remember your evening by This area alone is very exciting, but throughout Toronto there are 130 members of the Toronto Theatre Alliance. That's small theatre, dinner theatre and large theatre. And we're just coming now to the entranceway to the Princess of Wales where we are showing Miss Saigon. How does it make you feel when you come close to your theatre and you're about to go in? When the seats are full, it feels great. <laughs> Here, 
The Canadian National Exhibition is Canada's longest running annual fair. That represents a hundred years of tradition and for the young at heart, it represents a hundred years of fun. Nothing short of spectacular. The cosmopolitan nature of town, the, the restaurants, the shopping, the people, nothing short of spectacular. It's absolutely beautiful. There's so much to learn. We're having a great time here. We're only here for two days. There's almost more than we can even envision, but we're planning to come back and take in some more of the site. I like the lot. I'd like to live here someday. Toronto really has everything. The only thing is, I'm telling you everything about everything and I hope you won't open up next door to me and cut prices. The Travel Magazine will be right back in Montreux, Switzerland, so don't go away. The city of Montreux is probably best known for its world-famous jazz festival. But situated on the shores of Lake Geneva, surrounded by the majestic Swiss Alps and lined with lush vineyards, it's not hard to imagine why it acquired the nickname Pearl of the Swiss Riviera. Well, you know, I live nearby Montreux, and uh, what I like especially near Montreux is Le Mans Lake, Lake Geneva, as we say also, and you can go and cruise on the lake to see the landscape, smell the, the beauty of the nature, and also go around the Lake Geneva region. Stravinsky, as a lot of famous people, came in the Lake Geneva region to find inspiration. I think this lake, the Le Mans Lake, Lake Geneva, uh, gave inspiration to poets, writers, composers. Uh, you know, we have a lot of stars living in this area, and a lot of stars lived uh, years before. I could mention Clara Haskell, uh, Paderewski, Tchaikovsky, Charlie Chaplin spent the last years of his life in Vevey. You can see his statue with the rose, the typical Chaplin rose. Montreux truly deserves its reputation as a vacation paradise. Thanks to its sheltered and sunny location, visitors flock to this city on the lake. It was about 150 years ago when the first people came here and when I say the first people of a certain importance like Victor Hugo, like Rousseau, then they started writing about Montreux and people got aware of that. Uh, the place itself is considered to be a natural beauty, uh, have a microclimate and the Russians soon discovered that sort of advantages and they came actually to Montreux in order to spend a mild winter. Montreux is not only for the rich and famous, but it also attracts visitors from all over the world. The history of the area is not lost in modern day Montreux. The castle of Chien was uh, built in the 13th century, a good 200 years before America was discovered. It was built uh, by the Savoyans, which is just across the lake, was then taken over by the Bern Bernese, people from Bern, uh, and then got back into the property of the Canton of Vaud. It is on a, in a beautiful place. 
it is also in an angle where it can control the lake and the mountains. Visitors can spend hours roaming through the rooms and dungeons that tell the story of the castle's colorful past. How did it become famous? I mean, uh, lots of people know about uh, it is thanks to what I would consider the best uh, fo foreign labor or first foreign labor in, in, in this area was Lord Byron. He came here and uh, uh, found this castle, well, good enough, or ins it inspired him to write The Prisoner of Shillong Castle. This is, was done here. The sign of any great city is its commitment to the arts. And in Montreux, the Stravinsky Auditorium is home to some of the world's best jazz and some of the world's greatest concert recitals. In this auditorium, you have wonderful concerts now because it's one of the most beautiful uh, concert halls in Europe. It was made uh, less than one year ago and there is a wonderful sound. Just go and listen to it. Situated on Lake Geneva, Montreux has become known for its breathtaking sunsets. What better way to see the mountains above Montreux than from a hot air balloon? So don't go away, we'll be right back. Montreux's train network is the gateway to the Swiss Alps. Uh, from Montreux we, we can make excursions within uh, in a day. You can see Italy, France, as far as Bern, you get uh, to the capital. So people come here in order to make excursions all around and excursions with last, well, not tiring, but uh, interesting. The Crystal Panoramic Express is the newest a most comfortable way to enjoy the beauty of the region. That's a brand new train we have on the MOB line. It's a new train panoramic view with big windows. It starts in July until October, twice per day, once in the morning at 9, once in the afternoon at 2 o'clock. So when you have a URL pass, this pass is valid on this Crystal Panoramic Express because the whole trip is in first class, so you need either a URL pass in first class or you pay a little supplement. So when you leave from Montreux, it's the Lake of Geneva. You have a view on all the lake, and you pass through all these vineyards. You have the view on the mountains around. You can see French mountains, Swiss mountains, and then you cross the Swiss Alps, and you see all the Swiss Alps with the glaciers. The Coqueville steam train is Swiss ingenuity at its best. And from the town of Caux, this Coqueville train offers visitors a chance to see the Montreux region from one of the highest mountain peaks in Europe. That's also a nice train, which goes from Caux, which is on the halfway from Montreux up to the Roche de Nez. Our house mountain, 2,000 meters, where from you have a nice view down on the lake and all the Swiss and French Alps. And um, it's a nice train because you have the real feeling of the nature and the steam because all the coaches, they are open, the windows, win windows are open, they are not closed, so you really have the feeling of the air and the nature. So Eurail Pass is not valid on this train, but it's not as so, so expensive. You only pay 45 Swiss francs for this really beautiful trip. The trip climaxes at the peak of Montreux's house mountain, Roche de Ney. Once on the top of the mountain, you can experience the beauty of the area with the many hiking trails that cover the mountain.
The valleys of this area are dotted with many small towns. Chateau Deux is a quaint resort town nestled high in the Swiss Alps. Chateau Deux is one of the lovely resorts in the Alps. And in Chateau Deux, you can to see how the uh, real Gruyere cheese is made. This is the place where the Gruyere is made. And the visit to Switzerland would not be complete without a lesson in making this famous cheese. Okay. 30 kilos. Chateau Deux also offers a wide range of other activities. In Chateau Deux, you can, well, you can have fun doing sport, uh, canyoning, rafting, paragliding, hot air ballooning. That's something very special. Hot air ballooning, you can do this all year long. Of course, people prefer to do it in summer because it's nicer and you have sun. Uh, you can see the cows, the people, and it's great. But also in summer, it's easier in summer. You know, the principle of the hot air ballooning, if the, the air is cold, it's much easier. You can go eight people in a balloon. And while you arrive in the morning, it's better to do it in the morning. You go into the balloon and then, well, you can have a fly of one hour. The better for me is when you have uh, uh, clouds, so that you go up and then when you arrive up above the clouds, you see the mountains and the sun. Montreux and the surrounding area is what you have come to expect from the Swiss. A combination of charm and hospitality, together with some of the most spectacular scenery in the world, making it one of Switzerland's most popular destinations. Well, that's it for this edition of the Travel Magazine. From the Swiss Alps above Montreux, I'm Jake DeBoer. Bye for now.